Greetings. This is going to be a video about playing up and down the ladder on the double bass. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for playing pizzicato and with the bow. So uh, before we start, let's do pizzicato for double bass. So bass is a little different uh, than the other instruments in that we've got two styles of pizzicato and you can read more about this in the book and also there's a separate video on pizzicato on the channel here. Um, unlike violin, you don't want to place your thumb in the corner because then you would be pitzing in the bowing lanes. So you're going to put it about six inches above the, above the edge of the fingerboard. That's where you place your thumb. And then point your fingers towards the bridge. And then when you pluck, pluck into the string below the string you pluck. We call that rest stroke. And rest stroke is used on the bass for lots of different styles, jazz, uh, bluegrass, and we use it in orchestra whenever we have music that's in those styles. And it's a good style of pizzicato to learn because you can get a lot more sound out of a bass this way than if you pluck freely into the air, which you would need to do if you were holding your bow, you're going to need to pluck like this. It's more common in orchestral pizzicato to do the free pits. And it's more, much more common. In fact, it's pretty much always done in the uh, bluegrass and jazz and folk styles to do the rest stroke. So we're going to start by doing rest stroke in the uh, up and down the ladder. Now, so it's a good habit to get into to alternate between your index and your middle finger. You'll see some bass players trying to do it all with one finger, and if you are at a slow tempo, that can work. But I would recommend alternating between your index and middle fingers. Now, uh, standing with the bass, Make sure that the bass is balanced and, uh, and that it's not leaning back into your left hand. So placing of the left hand fingers, let me show you the tapes I have. I've got a first finger tape and a fourth finger tape. And then up here, this is a tape where your first finger will be on it in fourth position. So if I'm all the way into the neck block, that's where my first finger goes. It's also the same place where your fourth finger will be if you're in third position. It's one octave higher than the open string below it. So for up and down the ladder, which for the other strings, it makes a lot of sense because you go up and down one string. But of course, bass players are special, so we'll be hopping over to another ladder, uh, the G string. So uh, when we place our fingers down, we want to make sure that our thumb is behind the second finger like that. Um, one problem that bass players have is they wrap their thumb around the neck and you see how as soon as I do that it collapses, it changes the, the position of my fingers. Other thing is the wrist should be flat. As you go across to the E string, there will be some bend in the wrist. But if your fingers are on the G string, it should, the, the wrist should be flat. And you may need to adjust the instrument a little bit. We don't want it too far in or too far out. Once we get to the bow, we can do some more adjusting with that. But, so we're going to pluck. And then we're going to put our first finger down on the note E on that first finger tape. Then there's only a whole step between one and four on the bass, so we're going to put our fourth finger down on the F sharp. And then for the G, we're going to go to the next open string, which is different from all the other instruments in the orchestra. And then we're going to repeat the G, and then we're going to come down the ladder by placing all four down and this is really an important lesson to learn. Fourth finger never works alone. Fourth and third 
always are together and these other two fingers are always going to be down. So when you're playing with fourth finger down, all the fingers are down. Then we lift one and open. So that is up and down the ladder pizzicato and some things to watch for in terms of the, the fingers, the left hand wrist, uh, standing with the instrument so that it's balanced and not uh, leaning backwards onto the thumb because that can lead to that type of thing. And then pizzicato rest stroke with the fingers pointing towards the bridge and the thumb anchored about six inches above the edge of the fingerboard. Now when we get to the bow, and I'm going to be demonstrating with the German bow, and so I'll take you through this German bow hold again. Uh, let me see if I can get a good angle here. So right into the palm, thumb on top, and pinky, tip of the pinky on the ferrule so you can hold it just like this. And I've got another movie on uh, forming the German bow hold that you can watch. But just to review that, and then these two, a big problem a lot of people make is they, they straighten uh, index and middle out. So bring those right next to the, uh, the thumb. And then uh, the other problem people have is they just, the poor third finger, they just have to do something with that ring finger. But it does not do anything, it just floats. The, that ring finger just floats. <laughs> When you get the when you bring the bow to the string, uh, so you can do some helicopter lifts like you do on violin, viola, and cello. Uh, one of the things is um, from the bass player's perspective, uh, getting that that bow angle perpendicular to the string, parallel to the bridge, uh, is really important and. Uh, Something my first teacher used to say to me is raise your tip as a way to... But if, the, if you think about it, one of the things with the base arm, the right arm, is that the elbow is relatively straight. We don't want it locked, but it, it's not going to have a lot of bend in it. When I think about a cello bow arm, you know, swinging, there's some bend in the elbow more so than on the base. The base tends to be straighter. <laughs> And the other thing, now with a German bow, that weight's going to come through your thumb. Add some weight into the string before you start. And there's flex in these fingers that we need to have. So when I'm going down bow, I'm going to pull away. It's like I've got super glue on the tips of my fingers. I'm going to pull away. And then when I'm going up bow, I'm going to push and my palm's going to come right up against the frog. So you see how my the tips of my fingers stay in a consistent contact point with the stick, but my wrist and fingers flex a little. So when you introduce, if you have this opportunity to do this, I would start, I would land your bass players in the middle and have them start by doing an up bow. There we go. Where they get that, that crisp sound. That we want to listen for that articulation so they have to press a little before they start and set the string into vibration. And then stop, stop, stop. So a little bit of that for bass players can be very, very helpful at the beginning. Now, so we've got that bow. You can try that that uh, taka taka stop stop on all the strings. And then and one thing you might notice about my bow placement on the bass is that because of the, the, the length of the vibrating string, this bowing lane three that we often talk about on the violin, depending on your bass, it might sound a little more open to go into bowing lane two, especially on the low strings, versus that. This might, this is probably going to give you a more open sound. The other thing is on the violin and the viola, we talk about squaring up in the middle. On the bass, 
uh, a little bit, it's more like the balance point where you should land. So this is the square. So you can have them square up in the middle and then let the bass players and cellists move a little towards the frog. It's going to be a little bit easier for them. Now, also check when you're, when you're doing this with the bow. The G string. Make sure your bass players are, it's kind of pushing out. It feels like pushing out as you get to the G string. And if they, if now if they're turned in like this, it's going to be really easy to play on the G, but they won't be able to clear the E string. So they've got to find where they can clear on the E string. And now if they're too far, of course, it's going to be really hard to get a good angle on the G. So it's finding that balance, standing with the instrument and balancing like this. And of course, watch the video on, uh, on posture and standing with the instrument for bass. So now we do up and down the ladder with the bow. And I'm going to go ahead and put on a backing track. And go ahead, if you've got a bass and you're playing along, get your bass. And we'll do this together. Here we go. So I'll play, and then you play back what I play to you. So here we go. Here's a little introduction. Oh, yeah. Checking my bow. Here we go. Now, first finger. Fourth. Cross to the G string. Stay on the G. Back to the D. Lift. And then lift up one. Okay. Now, um, there you go. So, those are some uh, ideas for things to check as you're doing up and down the ladder with uh, on the double bass. Uh, you know, bass is a little different from all the inst other instruments, so make sure you're giving your bass students plenty of attention at the beginning. They're the only ones that have a string crossing in this song. And um, once they get this down, let me show you that you can do it all on one string, <clears throat> but you have to shift to second position. And so this is something you might come back to later. I show this also in the video on Bylum Cabbage Down, but I'll show it to you now. What you do, now here's the story. That second finger wants to go visit fourth finger. So the second finger goes over to the fourth finger's house there. Second finger moves to the tape for the fourth finger. And then the fourth finger is on the G. And then back to second. And the first finger says, let's go back home. Right? So it's like they're doing a little traveling for Thanksgiving or something. fingers house they're having a great time together but first finger says it's time to go back home okay so you can have some fun with that when they when the bass player shifts thumb goes with them okay so thumb thumbs part of the family take thumb along to Thanksgiving dinner um, you know, make up some other story, whatever you want to tell your students. But it's uh, something that bass players need to learn how to do pretty early. And this is a pretty bass friendly shift, uh, at least especially in comparison to that third position shift. This is a little simpler and it's one that bass players use all the time. So you can show them how to do that. And then you can play, once you can do that, then you could play up and down the ladder on the G string as well. Here we go. See that thumb goes right with the second
same thing. <laughs> This gives you some good ideas for how to teach up and down the ladder and some things that will help your base students. So, I will see you in the next video. Bye!